Respectfully submitted for your perusal, a man whose profession is at the White House. He's not the president or vice president or secretary of state. In fact, he is a butler. Serving president after president, he seems to have eight lives. And his story can be found at your local bookstore. But it can also be found in an unread book located in the massive main library of The Twilight Zone. Have you seen Lee Daniels, The Butler? Loosely based on a true story, it's about a black butler named Cecil Gaines who served eight different presidents at the White House. There are many events that affect his life directly, including the Civil Rights Movement and Vietnam. Take a look at the trailer. I'm Cecil Gaines. I'm the new butler. You know he got that job himself. The White House called him. He didn't call the White House. Did you go to an all-colored school, Cecil? I didn't go to school, Miss President. I grew up on a cotton farm. Now if somebody would have told me I have today issued an executive to order at Little Rock, Arkansas. It was too hard to believe. You need to show them love with all your heart. That's the only way you're ever going to change their heart. Forrest Whitaker plays the butler Cecil Gaines and Oprah Winfrey plays his wife Gloria. They are just two of the many stars of this flick that came out in 2013. Check out this powerful scene where Cecil's son, played by David Oyelowo, questions Cecil's job. Sidney Porter is nothing but a rich Uncle Tom. Look at you. All puffed up. With your hat on your head. Covered in air. Saying whatever you want. You need to go. What? Just I'm sorry, Mr. Butler. I didn't mean to make fun of your hero. Everything you are and everything you have is because of that butler. Cecil Gaines did what he needed to do for his family. There are lots of messages that can be pulled from this movie. One of the big ones I like is the reminder to maintain your character and integrity no matter what your job is, what happens on your job, or how you're criticized. We should handle our businesses and do our jobs well, but we should not worship our jobs or do anything that contradicts our faith. Sometimes we need to get an attitude like the three Hebrew boys in the Bible who refused to worship the image that was set up. You remember how Nebuchadnezzar the king, he threatened to kill them if they did not worship that image, but these boys stuck to their guns. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Those three boys were determined to do the right thing, even though it threatened their lives and God saved them. Many of us can identify with being in dire situations that force us to make choices. And those choices can be hard when you see your job as your source. If you are a believer, remember that God is your source, not your job. Your job is just the conduit that God uses to bless you. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I encourage you to do the right thing and trust God even when it's uncomfortable and even if it appears to threaten your livelihood. We should not worship money. Put God first and worship him. As our Heavenly Father, he has our back no matter how dire the circumstances look. I like this passage from Psalm 23. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. 
My cup overflows with blessings. I hope you realize how blessed you are. I'm honored that you chose to hang out with me today. No matter what you do for a living, take the limits off your faith. The word says that he is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above and beyond all you can think or imagine according to the power that works in you. We get our power from him. Thank you for watching.